Uh, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Alona, and um, actually this is my first um, plenary meeting as I have joined uh, the project last summer. Uh, before that, I was working on several other projects uh, within the same research group in Cambridge University, where uh, I was looking at mathematical modeling and optimization of uh, manufacturing processes and um, also airline operations. So within uh, in GCDI project, I'm looking at optimization of the network uh, performance um, from a network point of view. So as you can already guess, I, I love optimization. So um, today I would like to show our progress so far on um, predictive maintenance uh, planning um, optimization. Uh, so I just want to say that uh, this is still an early stage of this work, so please uh, don't judge too hard. Uh, but um, having said that, um, that uh, this is uh, early stages, um, I'm very excited about um, this model and we believe that it can be a very good tool for decision making uh, support or it um, certainly have a great potential with some uh, further uh, extensions and improvements. So um, let's um, start. So. First of all, um, very br briefly, how this um, work uh, fits to service uh, assurance theme, and in particular to uh, work that um, other researchers um, uh, are doing within um, our team in Cambridge. So there is work done on anomaly detection uh, by Manuel, where he is looking at um, PT uh, traffic data, and um, he has developed uh, a technique based on graphic uh, based on graph Fourier transforms to analyze um, traffic patterns and to um, identify uh, abnormal behavior in the network and also to identify um, which nodes are causing uh, these um, anomalies. Another area where a lot of uh, work done um, uh, by people who was involved in the project um, before and also Rishi is working uh, on it now is failure prediction. So where Rishi is looking um, using uh, collaborative uh, learning for prognostics and um, when there is not enough data to learn from. So assets can uh, learn from uh, other assets failures, from assets that behave similarly. So Risha has talked a, a little bit about it yesterday. And um, also Manuel has developed a simulator that helps to understand the impact uh, of um, individual node failures on the network performance. So where you can perform kind of what if analysis and see what will happen. Also, he's looking at criticality analysis, how important the node is um, for the network. So if this is a, a critical uh, node and if it fails, that will have a higher impact on the network performance than a uh, less critical node. And uh, also Yanni, in our group, a PhD student, he's looking at uh, calculating this criticality in a distributed way. And this is um, where my work on network-wide optimization, uh, predictive maintenance uh, planning uh, joins in and tries to use the outputs of uh, all the above tools uh, and aims to provide uh, best um, maintenance uh, plans uh, given failure predictions for individual equipment. And uh, doing so not by looking at um, just at individual equipment and making uh, independent decisions, but looking at the whole network. Uh, at the performance of the whole network. And then it all naturally comes to the work that Marco is doing uh, on agent-based uh, control architecture. So how all of this uh, above can be enabled, how to design agents, um, what should be architect of those agents, how they should be uh, linked and communicate with each other and have the ability to make the uh, decisions based on those uh, algorithms, um, all these above algorithms and how to activate uh, those uh, decisions. So uh, at this presentation from now on, I will focus uh, on the network level optimization part. And the main goal here is to identify a network-wide optimal plan to perform predictive maintenance in such a way that the impact on the overall network performance, including um, cost associated with um, maintenance, is minimized. So again, the key message here is that we are trying to identify the best predictive maintenance plan, um, maintenance schedule, uh, not from the point of view of individual um, equipment, but from the point of view of the whole network. So the reason uh, why we look at uh, network-wide um, decision making is um, that when it 
comes to service assurance in order to provide a service to customers. Uh, so one asset won't provide, doesn't provide any uh, service. So network, uh, which is a collection of these um, assets um, that are connected to, to each other, this is what provides service. So if you want to answer any questions about service assurance or service optimality, we need to um, look at the whole network um, performance. So in order to achieve this, we need to take into account um, how a decision on when to perform maintenance for each equipment will affect um, other equipment, will affect the uh, traffic and will affect the whole network. So, um, for example, uh, when you look um, at two equipment individually and make decisions, uh, it can be um, the, the case that uh, the solution is to perform maintenance at the same time. But perhaps um, it might not be the best option as it can be uh, such a situation uh, that when um, equipment is shut down for maintenance, traffic can be rerouted um, in the best way through that another um, equipment. So it is, uh, can be better to uh, schedule them at different times. Or another example, um, so for example, when um, we make decisions on traffic rerouting while performing maintenance tasks, we need to make sure that we don't overload um, some other routes. So we need to choose not just the shortest path um, for this particular equipment, but uh, look at the network as a whole. Um, another example is um, uh, workforce uh, limitation. So um, at a particular time, there is a limited number of maintenance jobs that uh, can be performed. So. Uh, tasks uh, need to be prioritized and those that will have higher um, risk, so those equipment uh, that um, which failure will affect the network performance the most uh, should uh, have the highest um, priority. So therefore, uh, our goal is to develop um, such a, a model that we will look at this problem from network point of view and will uh, that uh, will um, incorporate all these aspects that uh, I mentioned. So um, here is um, the um, overview of the model. So what are the input and uh, outputs uh, of the model? Uh, telecommunication network here is represented um, as a set of uh, networks and links where nodes are um, uh, routers, switches, uh, servers or computers, and they are connected um, to each other by, by links represented, for example, cables. and. Um, so the, the model is general in a sense that uh, you can uh, input um, any network uh, configuration or topology or any um, <clears throat> parameters. So uh, the input to the, the model is um, a set of uh, nodes and uh, links and um, characteristics associated with those uh, nodes and links, for example, capacity of the links uh, or the distance between nodes. Uh, then we have a set of connections um, which uh, are represented in the form of the pair, uh, source, uh, sync. So let's continue. So, um, mm, yes, so uh, connections represented as a pair. And um, mm, so from which node to which node we want to send the traffic, and we have a uh, traffic demand for, for each of this pair, for each connection. So then we have a um, uh, set of nodes and arcs that are subject to failure. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, predicted time of failure uh, in the form uh, of a probability distribution, uh, which is the output of failure prediction algorithms. And uh, so here we consider uh, failures of uh, both uh, links and nodes. And uh, another uh, input uh, to, to, to the model is predictive uh, maintenance cost versus um, reactive maintenance cost. So uh, for, for each equipment subject to failure. So we Mm, here, we not necessarily need to know exact costs, but rather the ratios. So of how uh, much more expensive is it uh, to mm, perform predictive maintenance versus uh, reactive maintenance and similar um, processing times of, of maintenance jobs. And the outputs here uh, are, so which nodes and arcs should undergo predictive maintenance and when? And um, uh, what is the best uh, way to reroute uh, traffic when arcs and nodes are shut down for maintenance? Uh, and we strongly believe that these two uh, decisions need to be considered at the same time. 
so um, because the decision on when to perform maintenance um, affects the network um, uh, and uh, which depends on how the traffic will be rerouted when the uh, node is um, shut down for maintenance. So uh, now a little bit um, on the technical side uh, of the uh, optimization model. So it is formulated as integer uh, program, uh, programming uh, problem. And um, we have a planning time horizon, which we discretize in uh, time steps. Mm -hmm. And the optimization problem usually um, has uh, decision variables um, that we want to control, that we want to identify uh, their best values, and we have constraints and um, the objective function that we want to optimize. So main decision variables uh, here, um, there are some others, but these are the most important ones. Uh, these three decision variables uh, correspond uh, to the um, correspond to the output of the model. So First two are uh, um, uh, binary variables. Um, uh, they um, say whether or not this particular node uh, or a link is under maintenance at this particular time uh, period. And the third set of variables um, are um, integer variables that represent uh, traffic that uh, flows on a link um, at a particular time interval for a particular connection. So then we have a number of uh, constraints uh, that uh, guarantee that those variables um, behave how we want them to behave, that everything is modeled correctly. Um, so I listed here some of them. I didn't put equations because that um, they are too complex to, 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 to follow in such a short time. And um, it will take a lot of slides, uh, but um, so but this is a, a important uh, part, the most complex part of the optimization problem. And uh, in the objective function, we are trying to minimize the impact on on the network, which is represented um, in terms of costs. So here we are looking at a trade-off between our predictive maintenance costs and um, expected costs associated with the risk uh, of failure. So we don't want to perform maintenance too early uh, because a predictive maintenance cost per, per cycle will be too uh, high. So you can think about it as a um, lost life, uh, lost useful life of asset. And uh, also we don't want to uh, perform uh, maintenance too late because uh, we will have a high risk uh, of failure and costs associated with this failure. And uh, also because we are looking at the <clears throat> Uh, traffic uh, rerouted at the same time, uh, it's important to incorporate costs as associated with rerouting. So the last uh, term is the penalty on a long pass. So, of course, we don't want, uh, we want to have a, a sh short pass, shortest pass, but as I mentioned before, we are not looking just um, shortest pass from individual uh, point of view, but uh, from the whole uh, network view. So um, this uh, model and um, implementation of the solution to, to this uh, problem, uh, we have coded in uh, Python, and we performed a uh, testing of a large number of scenarios by using um, some simple networks. And uh, I will show some of the results on the example of artificially created network that you can see on this slide. Uh, it contains um, about 120 nodes or something like that. And uh, this um, network is kind of a, a co-periphery co network that we think uh, is represent a simplified version of metro access network that we would like to uh, apply this model um, to later on. And um, so I will show some of the results on, on this slide and on the next slide. Uh, but I must say that uh, these uh, data and the parameters that are taken, um, they might not represent the reality. So uh, in particular, the costs involved um, uh, here, because we don't have information on this yet. Uh, but of course, we have tried, uh, tried to choose them in, uh, fr from the common sense. For example, uh, that um, cost for uh, reactive maintenance um, and time for reactive maintenance is higher than for predictive maintenance, etc. But the goal here is uh, rather to demonstrate the concepts, the model, uh, and of um, what can we achieve by uh, by, by using this model. Um, so don't look at the specific values, at the specific reduction in cost, for example. 
uh, but rather we want to show this this comparison. But later on, uh, when we will have the real uh, numbers, we can just plug them into the module and see um, what can be achieved, how much can we save um, by um, considering decisions in uh, in su such a way. So let's consider um, this um, example, this case, um, uh, when we look um, at, uh, at the beginning, a look at individual asset. So how the decisions are made um, individually. So if you need to find uh, the decision on when to the maintenance need to be performed. So here we consider only one node, for example, node six uh, here, and um, which is subject to failure. And here is the probability uh, distribution, probability density function, so which is the input to, to, to the model. And uh, on the graph at the bottom, uh, we can see, um, so, so the, the x axis represents time. So he, here, as a simple example, is just 10 time steps, just to show the concept. And um, uh, th this, so, so um, what would be the cost of maintenance if um, maintenance, uh, so cost of maintenance and cost associated uh, with uh, this, um, uh, if the maintenance start at this specific time. So in red, uh, in red line uh, here, you can see the um, cost um, associated with the failure of this particular node, node six, and you can see that the minimum cost achieved at um, time two. So here we have a trade-off uh, between uh, predictive maintenance cost that is uh, shown in dark blue and it's decreasing in time. So it's hard to see here because the values are too low, but um, they, they are slightly decreasing. And um, trade-off uh, with um, um, expected cost uh, of failure, so cost associated with the risk of failure, which is shown in uh, light blue and uh, which is um, increasing. And so the minimum here is achieved at time two. So um, when we look at this case, when decisions are taken individually, so this is how um, decisions will be made for, for all uh, the nodes and, uh, and links. So now let's um, uh, look at the network view. So let's consider a number of failures. So let's, in this example, eight um, failures. So we have four nodes and, and, and four arcs. And we um, solve a uh, network-wide um, optimization problem and compare the solution to the um, uh, individual uh, case of uh, individual um, solution, individual optimization. So in, in, in this uh, table, um, second column represents um, the case of uh, individual solution. And uh, here we can see the um, start time of the maintenance job. So um, all of these are found in the same way as I showed on the previous slide. And uh, the third column um, is um, a solution when we run uh, the model um, to, to find network-wide solution. And um, we can see that the solution is different. So for some of them, it is best to uh, perform a predictive maintenance um, earlier. So these uh, values are shown in orange. Uh, but uh, for, uh, for uh, one um, case, so for example, for, for, for in this case for node six, which is shown in uh, red by red value, um, the best um, solution is to perform maintenance um, later, one step later. And um, there will be, in this case, will be a high risk uh, of failure. Um, and this is not uh, optimal, as we know, for Node 6. But overall, this is best for the network. Um, <clears throat> this graph shows the improvement. So the reduction in total um, cost uh, uh, by a certain percentage, so which is shown by um, on the right, by the bars on the right. And uh, here also you can see the behavior of the components of this um, to total um, cost, total objective. So predictive maintenance cost uh, in case of uh, individual um, optimization is um, lower. Um, and uh, so, so why is that? Is uh, because in case of a network solution, so as I said before, um, we said let's the, the, the maintenance need to start earlier, so then it will be higher cost of of, of this um, 
per, per cycle, uh, predictive maintenance cost. Uh, but um, within, uh, within overall, um, by the amount of, of, of lost traffic um, associated of, of um, this risk of failure, and also uh, in the network-wide solution, we are able to reroute traffic uh, in a better way. So we can see um, the advantage in the network performance overall. And um, so we, um, as a part um, of implementation of the solution to the problem, um, we also developed this visualization tool. So let me try to share this and see if it will work. So this visualization tool um, allows uh, to uh, visualize um, the network, to vis visualize the solution. So it might be not the best um, visualization tool um, that you ever saw, but uh, it serves a purpose. So the purpose for this was to, uh, to, to see um, our solution, um, to, to validate the model. So the solution actually behave like we want it to behave. So for example, if we just um, output these tables for, for traffic rerouting, it's hard to follow. What does it mean? Um, but here we can see, so yes, um, this traffic flow is connected, etc., etc. So So what can we see here? Uh, uh, here we can see um, several uh, connections. So here it's just uh, three connections. So source one, um, sync one, source two, sync two, etc. And um, uh, here uh, we have um, 20 uh, time steps. And at each time step, um, the node is shown in orange or link is shown in orange uh, if uh, the maintenance needs to be performed at this time step. Uh, and uh, here in these tables um, on the right, uh, the, this is the um, optimal maintenance plan for nodes and for, for arcs. And so this is the same case I showed on the slide. So these eight failures, and here we have the traffic um, for um, routes for um, traffic rerouting. So we can also play uh, this um, across the time steps. Uh, we can move and see what happens at each particular um, time step. We can choose um, to uh, see a particular connection or all connection, or we can, or we cannot. So I don't know, it doesn't show, but uh, if you hover, so you can see the information of uh, how much traffic flows and um, what connection it belongs to. And, it can be uh, that uh, traffic through this link. Um, uh, there is combined traffic for several connections, or traffic can split, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, so we, uh, we think that uh, this um, can be a, a useful addition to, to the main tool uh, that is implementation uh, of the model. And just just to mention um, several things. So, for example. Um, uh, when we solve this, pro so compared to the case when problem is solved individually, so for example, node uh, six, uh, node ten, and um, arc twelve two, uh, individual solution was to uh, perform maintenance um, uh, almost at the same time. And if we see here, um, so for example, we look at node two, uh, so. Um, link 62, which um, belongs to node 6, uh, and uh, node 10, these are links. So if the maintenance is performed uh, at the same time, so we don't have other uh, routes to node 2. So that's why uh, at the network view, the best way is to schedule them uh, at different times. So some of them will be performed earlier, some of them later. So what will be the best um, for the network overall? Or, um, for example, let me show one more case here. So, for example, uh, this um, uh, link 1557, uh, sorry, it's, it's this one um, link here. Uh, 
So uh, individual solution was to perform it uh, at step um, 15 or something like that. But the solution from network point of view is um, to start as much earlier at uh, time four. And why is that? Uh, so it can be explained in a way because uh, here uh, the node six will be uh, on maintenance at this time. And because we can't have traffic through uh, node six anyway, and um, can't go this uh, route. So we as well uh, might uh, perform maintenance uh, of this link at the same time. So we will, there will be advantage overall. Uh, let's go back uh, to, to, to the slides. Uh, uh, so, so currently it's just the, the model is tested on, on artificially created networks uh, and, uh, and data, but um, the plan is uh, to test the model on VT data, and we have data uh, on uh, back backbone network and metro access network. Uh, but so we need some additional data. I think uh, we will discuss this at the next um, session. Mm. Yes. So so another step. Uh, next step. So uh, the model um, in the way that was uh, presented um, uh, earlier is. Um, we, we assume that we know everything about um, the network. So we have the whole view of the network. Uh, this is a centralized vision. But we think that in reality, when we will start uh, applying it to the real network, the problem will be too complex from computational point of view um, to solve in a given time. Because uh, so here we are talking about near real time decision making. And um, there will be a considerable um, performance advantage uh, probably uh, in considering distributed algorithm, especially um, those capabilities that we want to mm, the network to have in terms of architecture and decision um, making capabilities in general uh, in other um, <clears throat> activities um, of the project. And uh, as a part, part of um, research, mm, one thing that we are interested in exploring is what advantage uh, will we have if we consider uh, a distributed algorithm to solve the problem and what will be performance trade-offs and what will be the benefits or what will be the comparison of um, centralized um, solution or decision in a, made in a distributed manner. And uh, another uh, reason to believe that we need a um, distributed optimization approach is uh, the fact that um, we potentially will be working with a partial, partial information availability. So if, um, um, of course, if we have full information, we can make a better decision. And the full information may be even available, but um, it might, it, it, not, uh, it takes um, um, much more time to reach uh, the full information. So we have a trade-off um, between um, time uh, it takes to access um, the information um, uh, versus um, how good uh, we want our solution to be. And uh, therefore, um, we started uh, to, to, to look at a distributed way to solve this problem. And this is very, very, very early stages, but uh, several questions that we would like to answer are um, the following. So what is the best subnetwork level um, of the whole network to have uh, intelligence to, to run those decision making algorithms or um, so in, in other words so a collection of how many um, nodes of how many assets uh, should be represented by one agent and what should be the topology for those agents how they should be linked together how they should communicate with each other and how can we implement this all uh, distributed optimization approach within the um, agent-based control architecture uh, that is Marco is working on. So here um, I want to answer those questions from optimization uh, point of view, uh, while um, Marco here is looking at, um, so from, from his point of view, from architecture point of view, so how to enable those, those behavior. Um, Just, just uh, I think I'm running out of time, but very briefly to mention um, just the first steps that we started to do on this. So by now we assume that each node uh, is represented by one agent and um, we want to identify what will 
what should be the best um, topology for, for, for those um, agents given their uh, network topology. So here we can see the very simple uh, network, just started with a very, very simple one. And um, at the moment uh, we uh, uh, vary the uh, topologies for the agents. So for example, case one is when uh, agent's topology is the same as underlying network topology. And um, uh, case two is when we have a uh, ring topology for agents for the same network. and um, so uh, I compare those solutions found in, in a distributed way from optimization point of view, while Mark is looking at characteristics important from architecture point of view and looking at um, CPU time, um, memory usage, etc. But uh, yes, so again, it's very, very early stages and we don't have a significant result yet to report on this, but we are, we, we are uh, working on it. And um, <clears throat> Just, just, just to conclude. Uh, so we believe that this uh, tool um, that was presented um, have a, a good potential for decision making support. If, if, if I can say so about my own work, <laughs> but um, of course um, it needs to be tested and validated on um, real data, on real networks, on real scenarios, um, which is um, the next step to test it on a backbone network, metro access network. And uh, together with exploring uh, this um, distributed way uh, to, to, to solve the problem, which is not easy to do. Um, and um, so I think that's it for me um, on this. So thank you. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so th th thank you also my team members for their help and support and their patience um, of getting me up to speed on the project as I joined um, uh, very late and um, yes so that's it and uh, I hope they also will help me to answer difficult questions that you might have. Thank you. <laughs>